what, how to travel with your pants. Okay, so let's jump in. I am going to show you everything that I have in my backpack. Most of this is um, for what I would take if I was just gonna go out here and plan our paint. Um, some of the stuff I have here on the table, I'm just gonna have as examples to show you things you can take. This is pretty much what I'm going to take with me to um, all of my travels overseas, as well as um, just out in the field. Okay, so let's get going. First of all, the backpack. This is a Sienna backpack, plein air. It's designed for plein air painting, and it has a lot of pockets, and you can see that it expands. And I've actually, it has these um, straps here that you can pull tight and really kind of scrunch it down further if you want to try to fit it in the overhead bin on the airplane, which it's fine, these do, and it fits great. Okay, so let me show you what I have, just starting from the outside. I'm gonna take everything out of here, one thing at a time, and explain everything you need. Okay, so starting with, I'll just start with the trappings. I have a bandana here. Let me get my water bottle out of the way. This bandana I've actually found very useful um, when I've been in the intense heat. I can get this wet and tied around my neck and it instantly cools me off. Um, you know, you just, you never know when you might need it. So um, I have some gloves here. These are those really cheap Walmart ones. I have these for when it gets cold and I'm out painting. Um, and I didn't do it yet with these, but what you can do is if you're right-handed, leave your left one alone. But if you're right-handed, what I will do is I will slit the throat on this first knuckle, just on the inside here, on these first two fingers and maybe my thumb. And then I'll bend them back so that just those tips of my fingers are showing so I can handle my paint, my brushes with a little bit more, you know, what I'm used to handling the brush. And so my hand still stays warm. And Somewhere in here I have hand warmers. And so what you can do if your hands get really cold is break those hand warmers and put them in your gloves and keep them warm. So I'm gonna set everything off to the side here after I show you. Um, I just stuffed an edge here. I had, this one I do like for travel. The Australian one's cool, but um, for regular, if I'm gonna travel overseas, this one scrunches down. It's a nice solid REI hat. Um, love these. And it, I like the little tie here because, especially in Ireland, it gets really windy and um, I like that for travel. I have, uh, you'd be surprised how when you're out painting, just to stop and take a break, there may not be anywhere to sit down. So I like to bring this little three-legged stool. It scrunches really small, has a Velcro strap here to make it stay nice and tight. And um, the outside of this Sienna backpack has this um, sort of stretchy, cord and a little pocket down here. Shirts for all kinds of options and things that you can do, but I like it for this. And you're going to need a bungee cord. And so this is to me a really handy way to pack along your bungee cord. So I just, um, I open this up and I have strung my bungee cord through here. You're going to need it for when you are setting up your equipment. I put my paper towels down below and I use the bungee cord for that. So my stool, I got to get it out of here. Goes like that. There's that, just a nice little sturdy, I'm gonna put it on the floor. Three-legged stool, and then of course your bungee cord. Okay, we're breaking it down. And then I've got my water bottle, and I personally like a water bottle with a filter because you never know where you're gonna be. Um, you know, so a filter is good. I do want to eventually get, I saw on a video this morning, scrunchy water bottles that you can scrunch down and they get really small. So I do kind of want one of those, but maybe I can get a filter to fit in those. Okay, so the outside pockets. Now, um, you'd be surprised the number of times that I have um, broke my own rules. <laughs> I'll get out of the car, I'll throw my keys right in my backpack, and then when it's time to go, they're way at the bottom, so it's really frustrating. So put your things that you're gonna need right away, just right in maybe an outside pocket. So in here, I have my keys, and I do use a charger cord, cord and you need this, um, you need a little charger block for, um, if you're out there and maybe you're filming or your phone dies or whatever, have this fully charged and then you can plug in your cord into it. So I keep that handy. Um, I've got my wallet, everything important, right in this little pouch. My cell phone. Oh, food from the airplane. <laughs> Just a little snack. Sometimes you, you're out there all day and get faint, whatever. Granola bars work fine. Just anything that maybe, I just kind of keep them always in my backpack every now and then because I'll switch them out. I'm, I'm always plein air painting, especially when the weather's warm. I have a 
a couple little clips here. Never know when those might come in handy. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, I've got my wallet, everything important, right in this little pouch. My cell phone. Oh, food from the airplane. <laughs> Just a little snack. Sometimes you, you're out there all day and get faint, whatever. Granola bars work fine. Just anything that maybe I just kind of keep them always in my backpack every now and then because I'll switch them out. I'm, I'm always plein air painting, especially when the weather's warm. I have a couple little clips here. Never know when those might come in handy. So I'm going to move this out of the way. <clears throat> and that is it for this pocket. Let's put that back up. And then in this pocket, And then in this pocket, it's a mesh pocket. And I like that because I've been through many airports and they always take apart your backpack. And things that are, you know, have chemical residue, they have little sensors it's going to indicate. So I just leave it where it's handy so they can get at it. Um, this is my, I keep in my Ziploc bag, my container that had linseed oil in it. And then this is my container it actually has Gamsol in it now, just because I'm in my studio. <laughs> um, but you want one of these. And uh, don't get the cheap ones. Get a little bit nicer, plein air um, canister for your paints. Inside here is a little mesh, so that it has holes on the bottom of this basket. And you put the Gamsol, or I use Gamsol, or Herbless Mineral Spirits. Um, that's this right here. What I love about this is overnight it'll separate. So you got all the grossness down below and up above is all clear, fresh, brand new stuff. So when you're traveling, you can't obviously bring the thinner with you, but you can pick some up when you get there and then you just, you're good to go every day. It's a nice fresh. Make sure that when you buy these two, that you get one with a good rubber gasket and that that is always in its little uh, trench inside here. Because if that little rubber ring is off a little bit and you put the lid on, clamp it down, put it back in your bag, it can leak. And um, also keep an eye on this. These are these rubber gaskets are replaceable. I've heard that they can break down over time. I have had mine now for years and I haven't seen it crack at all. So um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe soon, but we'll see. Maybe they'll get me through another season. So that is my uh, chemical. And I bring along some extra Ziploc baggies and things. Hi. <laughs> I have this one for my cell phone if I want to just it's like a necklace thing I actually use this kayaking but you can put your phone in here put it inside your clothes it stays nice and dry and safe um, so that's that I have a few baggies in here but you want to definitely keep these in a secure container like this all right so that is it for that pouch now right on the outside again I have really important things in the outside like emergency care items, personal care, things like that, that I'm going to want to reach in and grab right away. Number one being a raincoat. And I have obviously never taken this out of its case, but it's especially when we go to Ireland or um, other places, we're going to want that. And um, I keep a Ziploc baggie of business cards, and I have given these out many, many times when I'm out painting. And then I've got this nifty little bag here, get this out of the way, of emergency care items. And you can get little teeny first aid kits and that's probably not a bad idea. I've never had a need for one, but if it makes you feel better, then just do it. So this is my hand warmer. Um, I don't know, I guess I have more business cards. I have a few band-aids in here. I've, I have actually had times where maybe I break a nail and it starts bleeding or whatever. So keep a band-aid, a few band-aids. I have a few Q-tips. Um, Sometimes you can paint with them too, and I do get really neat effects with that. I have a hair tie because my hair can drive me crazy out there. The wind is blowing. Um, some rubber bands, never know when you might need one. I have some rubber gloves for oftentimes when I get back to the hotel and I want to finally wash my brushes for the end of the day. Just make sure that you don't do it in their nice sink. <laughs> I mean, if you do wash the sink out really well, whatever. But I don't like to rub my brushes right into my hand like this when I clean them. So I will throw on a rubber glove just on my left hand and wash my brushes that way. I keep a teeny little bar of soap for washing my brushes. You can bring, um, I don't have it here with me, but you can get those travel soap containers and put a bar of soap in there if you want to do that. Um, a little mirror. If you are actually venturing out into the wilderness, 
A mirror and a compass can save your life, so you really want to learn how to use them. You know, obviously you can flash the, you know, for survival. Um, chapstick, a pen, <laughs> and I won't be flying with this. So I won't be flying with this, but I do keep it in my planner backpack. It is um, just insect repellent. It's a teeny little canister of bug spray. Uh, I do also carry in here, which I don't because it's January right now, <laughs> but you can get the afterbite solution. You can get the afterbite solution. It's about the same size, like a big chunky marker, and keep it in your bag too in case you do get uh, mosquito bites, it, depending on where you are. If you're down deep south, south where they have rattlesnakes, you may want to get a snake bite kit. <laughs> um, one tip about painting in where they have snakes, rattlesnakes, um, if you smell cucumbers, you are by a den of rattlesnakes, so stay away. Uh, they will strike, and babies are more potent than their moms. Okay. So that takes care of the outside pockets. I'm going to kind of move some of the stuff out of the way and get to the inside. And I lay it down because the, um, cause it just zips open. And I love that feature about these backpacks. <clears throat> Now, I like to carry both oil paints and watercolors. So my backpack is a little bit fuller than what yours might be if you're just gonna do oil paints. Um, so starting with what's on the outside here, and I started with these right here because as I get down, there's, I mean, these are in no order of whatever. All right, starting on the outside pocket here, I'm gonna start with uh, what I have just so that I was able to slide in this flat part. This is a nifty little device. Uh, it opens like this. And along the side here, you have different sizes on both sides of your standard paintings, like an 11 by 14, and you can move the little slide thing up to fit the 11 by 14 size or eight by 10 or whatever. Uh, you can turn it then and look at your scene that you wanna paint to the appropriate size that you're gonna paint on. Like if you wanna see, okay, here's the trees, here's that cliff, here's the water as it comes down. And then you, you can make your composition sort of by looking through here. And then you take this, and here's your sketchbook. You lay it down in your paper, and you draw your rectangle. If you're doing an 8x10, just draw around there. And then you put this down, and you sketch your scene based on what you saw looking through here. Okay, now another neat little thing about this is these are always just a neutral, middle-of-the-range gray. And they did that because, and they put a hole in the middle. So when you're looking at your scene, you can look through this hole right here in the middle and get a try to get an accurate color and or value looking through here. And it'll it'll kind of isolate exactly what it is you're looking at. And there's a few holes. You can actually hang this one by something. But so that is there to help you with that. And these are nifty little things. They're not that expensive and they're good to just throw in your backpack. So watercolor, I have one of these little canvas roll up things. Uh, like this and you just open it up and I have all my brushes and pencils and everything I'm going to need for doing my watercolors and drawing. One of the things that I really try to teach and encourage people to do is do, keeping a little journal of your travels and just ideas and drawings and sketches. Especially, you know, writers will often whip out their little notepad and write down sentences or ideas or things that inspired them. Artists should do the same thing. So I always try to keep pencils handy. I've got in this little pouch at the end, erasers, pencil sharpeners, whatever, it's all there. You probably can't fly with a, an X-Acto knife. <laughs> so you, it, I have a pencil sharpener in here, just a standard one. I'm not sure that you can travel with those either because it does come equipped with a razor blade. So you may have to pick one of those up when you get to where you're going, but you know, such is life. So that is that. And I'll set that off to the side. Put my drawing stuff down here. I'm going to show you at the end all of the stuff laid out. And then I have my watercolor palette. And you can get smaller ones for travel, but you know, I've got all my colors in here and it's really lightweight, so I just pack it. It doesn't take up much space. So this is what I bring for that. And then this is my uh, journal, my sketch journal. And you can find this one I found at Barnes and Noble and I really like it because you know what? Let's face it, it looks cool with the leather. <laughs> But I also like that it is on the toned paper, so I can do my sketches 
like this and then add the highlights and so I kind of have that it's like toning a canvas you already have that middle tone value done so when you add the highlights and a little bit of shadows it kind of has that really neat sculptural feel so this one's coming with me you can get smaller ones too so there's that and another thing I wanted to show you about these is you can take clear gesso this is clear acrylic gesso uh, but Liquitex makes these and just put a thin coat on a page you can do it right over a drawing too and you can do a little bit of painting a little bit of oil painting on it if you want i wouldn't you know suggest thick impasto paint but you can do a little bit just a little of the either oil paint if you put some of this gesso down or um, you can even do watercolor but i wouldn't do the gesso if you're going to do a little bit of watercolor touch-ups not washes don't do big washes on those all right so here we are getting down another layer move this one this way Always bring your roll of paper towels. And if you, if, you, if you find this too big for your backpack, there's nothing that says you can't cut this in half and scrunch it down, or I've folded them in half before. It doesn't matter, because you're gonna rip them off and use them as rags, so you can do that. Um, now, they always will go through your painting bag when you're going through the airport. So, and I was scolded at one airport because mine were way down at the bottom and they had to rummage through everything. So just keep it at the top so they don't have to take everything out, which they probably will anyway. Um, so I keep all my paints in a scrunchy uh, Ziploc baggie. Now this bag is, it's, it, it's showing extra paint in here because I do want to bring a few extra colors than what I normally use. But the key ingredient of this entire bag is what's in this little Ziploc bag. Inside here, and you can find this, I will put a PDF of this below, but you're going to want to print off this document, okay? So you're going to travel. Airports do not call them paints. <laughs> These are called artist pigments. They really, really don't like paints. So call them artist pigments. And this says, the U.S. Department of Transportation defines flammable liquids as those with a flashpoint of 140 degrees Fahrenheit or below. This gives you the information that they need to know that these are not going to ignite, okay? So you have phone numbers here, you have all of the information. You can, I will give you this and I will leave blank down here. To contact this traveler, dial da 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 da. You can just write that in, write in your own name, phone number, whatever. So print that out, keep it in a separate Ziploc baggie, and then put it in your bag of paints, okay? Now, if you are going to check your bags, still do this and still put your paints in a Ziploc baggie, but the difference is, is you can take the 150 milliliter tubes of paint. I, if you're gonna check, bring your bag up on the plane with you, you can only do the smaller sizes, okay? Take note. <laughs> um, all right, so this is my essential bag. These are the paints that I will take with me wherever I go. And in every one of my videos, I, may, I have a list down below of the paints that I use. And I will again, I'm going to include all of this stuff in a list, um, a PDF. And that way you can print it out if you want. So that is all of these. I will show you what I am, my, my important ones are. So I, starting at the top of my canvas, I have just a little tube of white. And you know, most places you go, you can buy more paints so don't feel like oh I'm gonna use more than more of that white you know than that and just buy some more I'm gonna be spending a month in the UK and I'm pretty sure that I'll go through this but they have more there <laughs> so starting at the top of my palette then I will um, I use cadmium yellow medium and I use all gamblin um, this is yellow ochre burnt sienna ultramarine blue Alizarin Permanent, it's the same as Alizarin Crimson, it just has a better light, light fastness, and then Thalo Green. Okay, those are the, with those colors, there pretty much isn't anything I can't do, but <laughs> I want to play. There, I'm going to be places where the water is just turquoise. Um, if you're interested in some of my workshops, you got to check out my website, and I'll put a link below. Uh, I have really gorgeous workshops, I'm so excited. I, I, my Ireland workshops are both full. But I have some fantastic ones, two of them in England, Dorset, along the coast. And it's right on the coast. And so we're going to be painting beautiful water and cliffs. And we're going to do a plein, a plein air one and a watercolor one. So I'm really excited about that. 
also going to be in Sicily and Australia. So I, everywhere I go is going to be beautiful water. Destin, Florida, turquoise waters. Again, that has two spots left. And then um, San Diego also. So check out what is going on. It's pretty exciting. Okay, I'm taking all these paints out because I want to tell you what else. So I do want to try uh, an ivory black because you can get some beautiful greens with by mixing yellow as well as mixing some um, cadmium red lights or mediums with it. You can get some interesting browns that way too. So I do have my cadmium red light here and I have uh, transparent red oxide. And there are some permanent magentas, uh, quindachrone violet, things like that, that I have uh, magenta here. Why do I have two? I'll just bring one. <laughs> uh, this is a phthalo turquoise. Gonna play with that a little bit. Cobalt violet, cobalt blue, and a manganese blue. So those are colors that you just can't get with the standard tubes that I have packed. So there's that. And then I put it all in this Ziploc baggie with the printout. All right, so there's that. Okay, now to carry the wet paintings home or around or whatever, I bring uh, this Raymar travel pack. And this one I bought is an eight by 10. It's a heavy corrug corrugated plastic cardboard. Um, and they make, them, they make them in different sizes. This is an eight by 10. So you open it up and they have slots, plastic slots here. And what I do is I can get two eighth inch masonite panels back to back, um, two, four, six, maybe even eight if I find some smaller ones and kind of cram them in. Um, you can put in different sizes too. It, in this case, th because it's eight inches across, I can do eight by eights or six by eights or however configuration you want to get. Um, this is just a gesso board. You can get this uh, quarter or eighth inch masonite gessoed. Some of these I make myself. This is just gessoed on birch, uh, eighth inch birch. You can get masonite, you can uh, glue linen over it, which I've done to, uh, on a several occasions. Just glue linen down and um, press them between books, whatever. This one was just gessoed. So it's great to have these for travel. Um, and you get different sizes, of course, like that. Uh, I do plan on doing a little a little bit of moonlight painting when I'm out and about. So I bought this from Sweetwater. The links are down below. This is a light, and Sweetwater is a company that makes music stand lights. So this clips above my easel, and you can adjust this thing, of course. And I always take the AAA batteries out as soon as I'm done using it because they will corrode. I've had that happen before. So take the batteries out, put them in the little pouch that it comes with, scrunch it up, pack it up, and you're good for moonlight painting. I wanted to welcome you to my video here, um, painting a twilight scene on a summer solstice. This is the light that I use when I'm painting a plein air at night. Uh, it's a solar inflatable, that's the solar panel. You can adjust the intensity of the light. It's pretty cool. Um, then this is what I clip onto my easel. It is a music stand light, and you can adjust how strong the light is on your canvas. That. Okay, paintbrushes. I keep them in this PVC canister. You can buy these. Um, for brushes, I only take just I only take just a few basics: two, four, six, eight, a couple of sixes. That's it. Um, now you are. It's told you cannot travel with palette knives. I have done plastic palette knives, really just for cleaning my palette off. If you're gonna check your bags, then you can obviously put a palette knife in the bag and that's fine. Um, I don't know if all airports say no to palette knives, probably, but I just don't bring them. You can always pick one up wherever you are. 
Uh, and then I have a little liner brush for me for signing or for twigs or whatever. So that's that. Now the nifty thing about this uh, it, is there's a keyhole in it. So on my palette box down below here, this is my Open M box, okay? On this, there's a little screw that I put there. I put the screw in my palette box and I can hang my brushes just right off to like that when it's open and I'm painting, so there's my brushes. And this is my palette box. What I love about this is it literally weighs a pound and a quarter. So nice and little. There's an extension here in the back, like this, and you put it on the side over here, like this while you're painting, okay? So there's a little lip at the bottom you can lean your brushes on. I put my palette clip um, cups right here for my linseed oil, and these, of course, you can adjust the, um, the, the opening, closing, whatever that's there. And then the, the canvas that you're painting on, or the panel, is held on with these brackets right here. And on the back, there's adjustable wing nuts that move back and forth. And then this device here just clips onto a standard tripod. And I like this one because it is short and squatty and super heavy duty and it has the, the clamp. And then this device here just clips onto a standard tripod. And I like this one because it is short and squatty and super heavy duty, and it has the, the clamp right here. Just, they attach like this. I actually have that open, there we go. So there we go, it goes like that. And then you just open up your tripod and you're all set. Okay, and then that bungee cord, I run through my paper towels and strap that in between the legs of my tripod. In fact, I'll set it up here real quick for you. Okay, so you set it up like that. One more thing in here and then I'll get this out of the way. Always bring along a plastic bag for your garbage, like this. With the plastic bag, if it's windy, I do not do this, but if it's nice out and there's no wind, I open up these tripod um, flaps right there, like that, and that holds my garbage bag. If it's windy, it'll flap and it drives me crazy. So then you take your bungee cord, and you just hang that up on your legs too, like this, and you're all set there. Open up your box. Put your extension on. Okay, so we're about like this. And then the palette cups clip right here. The brushes hang right here, and then your palette uh, gamsol, take your lid off, and it hangs right on the little screw thingy right here, okay? So that is how that all works, and I have to tighten things, otherwise it's going like this, but I can tighten that. So that is my unit when I get out and paint. Now, some people have asked me about umbrellas, and I don't like toting around this bag. <laughs> Um, but if you do, the reason why is it's so heavy. It's cumbersome. I mean, this is like several pounds. If you're going to be out somewhere where you know you're not going to be able to find any shade and really intense hot, then it's a nice thing to have. I know that for filming, and most of the time I'm filming my videos, if I have an umbrella up, you can't see what I'm doing. So I often will not use them. Um, but they come with extension cords, kind of like putting together a tent a little bit. And um, this one is a best umbrella, best umbrella. And um, I keep a few extra things in here just for um, my own well-being. <laughs> I have some tent stakes, okay? I like having some tent stakes because I have long cords. And sometimes if it's really windy, I will put these in the ground and run cords up from the stakes to my easel just to help hold it down. You can also take your backpack and hang it from the easel too. 
put everything back in it and hang it up from here. It's pretty heavy. It's not going to blow away or shouldn't. <laughs> uh, so the umbrella just put together. Um, this is the logo there. Best umbrella. Gosh, I should have, these should all be sponsors, right? <laughs> put it in the little container like this. And then there's a clamp here that goes right onto your easel, wherever you feel that it is a handy spot to put it. If you put these longer extensions in it, then you can kind of bend it. But again, remember, I have had this on my easel before and it broke, <laughs> like the, the these snapped because the wind was, it just really picked up the wind and it was kind of a disaster. Maybe it was my fault because I had this up and I shouldn't have, whatever, but so there's that. And you can play with that if you want. I choose not to because it's just a lot to hassle with. There are a couple of extra items that I just want to call to your attention to. If you are traveling and you're not going to fly, I like to put my linseed oil in, <laughs> this is a small agave container. Sometimes linseed oil comes in small, small bottles and you can use that too. So that's a handy little thing because there's just the one little spout. Um, also, if these kind of coats, you never know when the weather can change. I like these coats because you can scrunch these up really, really small and put them in a Ziploc baggie, take all the air out and all that and pack it really tight in your backpack. And you really do want to have that because you never know when the weather's going to change. And so you want to be prepared for that. A nice outing can quickly turn pretty sour if you have conditions that are difficult. All right. Well, if you enjoyed this video and you got a lot out of it, go ahead and show your support by liking and subscribing. I really appreciate that. And share these with your friends. I'm going to be sharing this video quite a bit as it is very useful. And these are questions I always get asked. All right, you guys, thanks so much. See you next week.